What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. For those of you stopping by for the first time, if you see something that you like here today, please don't forget to subscribe at some point. For those of you stopping by that have been here before, welcome back to TLTG Reviews, my friends. Glad you came to see me. So, something a little bit different today. This is actually a combination of two different things. Today I'm bringing you seven fragrances that absolutely surprised me. Some better than I expected them to be. Some worse than I was expecting them to be. Stay tuned. Shall we begin? Let's begin now. So I'll actually give you the breakdown first. So five of them, the first five we're going to talk about are ones that were actually better than I was expecting them to be. I had high hopes for all seven of these fragrances, and the first five were actually better than I anticipated. The last two, they fell short. I was pretty disappointed in them. So let's jump into the first one. So with the first one's a very recent acquisition. I actually just wore it two days ago. Super, super happy to have this one. Dior Sauvage Parfum. I love the way this thing smells. The sandalwood and incense dry down that stays Forever and ever and ever. Now look, God, it's beautiful. I can understand where people are coming from when they say, oh, it's got weak performance. Because after a few hours, it gets really close to the skin, but it stays like that for a really, really long time. It's a pure parfum for sure. It just keeps this super mild aura for hours on end it really does i mean i could smell it 10 hours in i made sure to spray my wrist so i could really keep track when i wore it day before yesterday and i have something else on there right now i just caught a whiff of it i i get where people are coming from some people say oh four five six hours and it's gone no not really you if you're just spraying your neck in places like that you just can't smell it anymore because it's sitting close to you so close to your skin but if you get it in range of places you can smell, you'll get whiffs of it from time to time. As far as the performance, it's kind of what I expected it to be. It's not real heavy early on. It's a moderate at best early on. And then after a few hours, it's sitting really, really close to the skin. But I tell you what, my wife loves the way this thing smells. I absolutely love the way this thing smells. The scent on this one is exactly the right Sauvage for me. I do like the EDP. I'm not going to knock any of them. The EDT, it's just smelled it too many times, but the Parfum, it's just right for me. I went out on a limb. Look, I've tried the EDT, I've tried the EDP. I had never tried the Parfum, and I flat out blind bought a big 200 milliliter bottle because the price was right. I went out on a limb with it because I heard a lot of bad things about it. But I'm one of those guys, at worst case scenario, I'll find a new home for it. But turns out I absolutely love this thing and I'm super happy that I got a big bottle for less than the price of a 100 milliliter bottle. So the first one that actually surprised me in a good way and was better than I was hoping for is Dior Sauvage Parfum. Next I got this one right after everything started opening up in Texas and I was finally able to go back to a Marshalls. It had been three months since I had been to Marshalls so I was excited to just get something and I grabbed John Varvatos and Nick Jonas crimson and i also grabbed this hugo iced now look i wasn't expecting it to smell crappy i wasn't expecting it to smell phenomenal i thought it would be okay at best and when i got home i opened it up i sprayed it and i got my first impressions this is one of the most delightfully wearable mint fragrances that i've ever smelled it's a it's a spearmint type of mint and it's synthetic in a good way you know because natural mint i don't think would be as pleasurable as the scent is on this one. I liked it so much that I was doing my cheapy summer list the next day and I this actually bumped something else out of the list so it can get in it because I was so pleasantly surprised at just how much I like Hugo Iced. I think it is super underrated, super slept on. If you're looking for a good mint fragrance, don't just think Crypto Mint, don't just think Wild Mint from Mazzaro. Hugo Iced, it was just so much better than I was expecting it to be. Like I said, I was expecting it to be okay. You know, it's something I'll wear here and there. And it's still something I'll wear here and there because I have so many, but I'm telling you, this, this shocked me. I was very surprised at how much I actually enjoyed this one. 
Hugo Ice. Slept on. Next, this is another one that I just love pretty much everything. I've, actually, everything I've ever smelled from the house has been an enjoyable fragrance for me. It's actually one of my absolute favorite houses, bordering my favorite, really, uh, from a cheapy perspective whenever it goes to discounters. Now, I heard mixed reviews when this one came out. It's a new release, and I was skeptical, but I saw the note breakdown, and it's all, it seemed like things I like. It's a blue fragrance. I love blue fragrances. I gave it a chance for $29 absolutely love this fragrance Ferragamo from Salvatore Ferragamo their newest release call it generic call it what you will I think it smells great I really do Atomize is beautiful on this thing too god lord at the end of the day that don't matter but there's a satisfaction that comes with spraying that on you that's just it's great I smell it floating in the air and here's the craziest part about it once I smelled it, I'm like, okay, smells better than I thought it would. And, you know, I'm happy about that. But then the performance, eight to nine hours, heavy projection for the first three. <sighs> Mind blown. I did not see that coming. I didn't think it was going to perform as well as it did. I figured it wouldn't be no slouch. I didn't expect it to be a five-hour fragrance with, you know, just an hour of project moderate projection. I just didn't think it was going to perform as well as it does perform on my skin this is another one that i don't know if it's necessarily slept on but i don't see a whole lot of people talking about it there's a few that are really putting it out there and promoting it and uh there's a few people that are wearing it for sure more than a few i just think it's great it's definitely much better than i thought i was expecting it to be okay another one just like hugo ice it's gonna be okay i'm gonna wear it here and there it'll find my rotation but the scent's better than I expected, and the performance is way, way better than I expected. Do yourself a favor, because it's cheap now, even though it's a new release. When you find this one in that $30 range, don't sleep on this. This is a damn good blue fragrance with a lot of green herbal aspects, and that's just, ah, just love the way it smells. Ferragamo. Salvatore Ferragamo. Next, this is one that I tempered my expectations on. You know, majority of what you'll read about it or see on YouTube is not real alluring and exciting when it comes to this fragrance and you know I tempered my expectations and I thought to myself well it can't based on the note breakdown it looks like something I'd enjoy it just does and I'm not I'm the one that you got to try it for yourself that's my motto don't just don't just go off of what I say try it for yourself don't just go off of somebody else you watch or some other review you read try it for yourself maybe don't blind buy a bottle but definitely sample it first and I was pleasantly surprised, and I think it's super underrated and unfairly hated. It's One Million Cologne, Paco Rabanne. Yes, it's a heavy, relatively synthetic rose. I get all that. I like it, though. It's a dusty, powdery type of rose with that tonka bean that comes in later. It's got a sweetness. It's like a more floral, more powdery version of Invictus Aqua in essence. It shares a lot of the same notes. It's got a similar heart and base profile aside from the tonka bean and the rose stays prominent. The C notes, all these different things with the citruses really makes this seriously to me smells like Invictus Aqua with a synthetic rose, tonka bean on the base, more powder than you expect from Invictus Aqua. I was pleasantly surprised because this is the one I went in with low expectations thinking maybe this is a fragrance that's going to just get a, you know, at best average rating from me because maybe everything I've read and heard is true. And look, it's subjective. Everybody's got their opinions and this is just mine. But for me and my taste, this was better to me than everything I read, heard and saw about it. And this is a perfect example of why you should sample things for yourself because you never know what you will like. Some fragrances rot and die on the market and get discontinued because they get an unfair shake sometimes. And this might be one of those cases with One Million Cologne. Sample it, try it for yourself because I was extremely surprised at how much I enjoyed this. Now this one, I picked this one on a whim. So this was sent to me for review from Amaru. This is one of the two fragrances that I got and I had never smelled the most prominent distinct note in this fragrance. We're talking about Amaru 
white hinoki. So I picked it because of the hinoki wood. Never smelled that before. Could be, I'm, I've read, oh, it's too feminine up top and all these different things. And I was like, man, it's risky. I should get wet stone and play it safe. Ah, don't want something that smells like other stuff I got. I want something that I've never smelled before. Let's try that. So glad that I grabbed white hinoki. The hinoki wood in this is a citrusy, smoky wood. And there's a boozy accord in here that mixes with it. I've said this every time I've talked about it in the video. It's just so beautifully blended. It's powerful without being overly powerful. It, it's, you know, got good projection without filling the room for hours on end. And it smells unique. I don't have anything else that smells like this. I doubt I'll ever again have anything that smells like this. Very unique, but pleasantly unique. I was so happy that it turned out the way it did. I'm so glad I picked this one. I could have went safer. I could have went oud to back, which I already have a decan of that. I, now, I, that, that could have been a safe bet. I could have went wet stone. I hear that's kind of a niche aqua de jo type of smell. That would have been a safe bet too. I went out on a ledge with this one. And I ended up not falling off because I was very pleasantly surprised and I absolutely love the way this fragrance smells and that's White Hinoki from Amarud. Now we're on to the two that surprised me in a negative manner. I'm not gonna say I had high hopes for this fragrance, but I expected to like it more than I do and maybe over time I'll find a better appreciation for it. I really want to like this one, but it's just, you know, I don't call fragrances generic. I can usually find the good in them. But this just smells like a generic synthetic oud fragrance to me. It's not bad, but I damn sure don't think it's good. Calvin Klein, Euphoria Intense. I've heard gold is great. Maybe I should have got that one instead. It's not bad. It's not. It don't smell bad, but it's a basic synthetic oud fragrance. It smells like a run-of-the-mill designer oud, which I say that being a lover of blue fragrances. I get the irony of that. I understand, but that's my style and my taste. And look, I thoroughly enjoy a lot of oud fragrances, but this one, like I said, it's not bad. I'll wear it. I'm just not going to reach for it often because it doesn't smell as good as I hoped it would. Performance isn't not anything special either. For being an intense fragrance, I get about five hours, which doesn't bother me, but I expected it to give me seven or eight. You know, not the end of the world. I don't mind refreshing. Never have. I never will. I keep my bottle with me because I keep my backpack with me in most instances. Now, granted, this is more evening wear, and this is something I would spray before I leave the house to go somewhere in the evening with my wife, but it just, it underwhelmed me. It was not as good as I expected it to be because Euphoria is such a beloved fragrance. I thought, I'm going to go with Euphoria Intense, get the darker version with the oud. And like I said, it's okay, but my expectations were here. It came in here. It was below expectation. Therefore, it surprised me, but not the way I was hoping it would surprise me. It's Calvin Klein, Euphoria Intense for Men. Now, this particular one may upset some people, but there's gonna be a lot of people that totally get it. I am so glad I did not buy a big bottle of this. I was cautious on the right fragrance. Thank God. I ended up with a dabber. Now look, I had expectations going into this. I was gonna look at it as an individual fragrance because Dior, they just make great fragrances. They just do. Arguably the best designer house, one of, for sure. I know people can agree with me on that statement. <sighs> Dior Homme 2020. So this is a dabber. This is a little small 10 milliliter bottle. I actually paid a little over $20 for this 10 milliliters. Came in a box and everything, which where did I put the box? Oh, I put it somewhere. It's a cool looking bottle. Just a mini version of the bottle. 
I don't know if it's because of the excessive amount of ISO E Super mixed with cashmere wood, mixed with cedar, and it just being overly woody and synthetic. It just doesn't really smell right in the dry down on my skin. The opening's not bad, but the dry down just makes me want to get it off of me, you know? So this is one of those Dior fragrances that I will never, never get a full size bottle of. I'll always just have this little 10 ml just cause the little bottle looks cool. But Dior Homme 2020, look, I love, love Iris. You guys know that. I love the Dior Homme line. You guys know that as well. I can be very subjective and very open-minded when it comes to fragrances. And like I said a little while ago, I can find the good in most fragrances. I can. This is not for me. Does it stink? Borderline to me in the dry down. Yeah, it kind of does. The opening's not bad. I just don't care. It kind of gives me a headache with the dry down, believe it or not. I just don't like it. And I'm not knocking it because it doesn't have iris and I'm thinking of the original Dior Homme. No, like I said, I can go into it thinking, ooh, a new fragrance from Dior. Because I have Dior Homme and I'm probably never going to run out of that five ounce bottle. So I was subjective with this. I was going to go into it with an open mind and I've tried several times and it just doesn't work for me very underwhelming it surprised me how much i actually don't like dior Homme 2020. well that's my seven guys a little bit different from what we normally do and until next time do me a real quick favor go ahead and like comment subscribe I do appreciate all the feedback i love hearing from you guys how many of these do you have similar feelings on especially the ones that were underwhelming for me you know that were lower than my expectations some of these like a uh, white hinoki for example so happy that I picked that Dior Homme, I mean, a uh, Dior Sauvage Parfum. Super happy that I jumped on that too. Just saying, you never know when you blind buy so much. <laughs> but until next time, I will say, if you get your hands on some of these, and you give them a spray now, you might end up thanking me later. And you were warned, with my opinion anyways, on Euphoria Intense and Dior Homme 2020. I don't care for those. Have a good one, guys. Pete, this is not a drill.